What's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday night, 9 p.m., and it's your boys, Mike and Mish, with the Mike and Mish Show. What up there, Mikey? Yo, what up there, Kyle? Welcome back to New England, baby. Yeah, we are back. We are fresh off another trip to the beautiful, sunny New Mexico, home of Breaking Bad, and we actually went to the house. It was another great show, full of knockouts and action. What do you think, man? Oh, it was uh, really good. And you know what I heard from a lot of people before this card? And uh, I don't mean anything bad by this. It's just a lot of people were like, I was excited for the card, but not super excited for some of the matchups. And guess what? They all changed their mind afterwards because I've talked to more than a few people that were like, holy shit, that was a good card. There were some great fights on there. People showed up. They showed up. There was some breakout stars, dude. There were some breakout stars. There was um, awesome. So there were a couple really nice knockouts. Um, yep. In the main event, I think a lot of people weren't giving um, Aguero a, a chance in that one after only one fight in bare knuckle. And he gave um, John Dotson the run for his money, went to a draw, an unfortunate draw. Uh, we, uh, guys, we were in the audience. Uh, we're going we're gonna to shout out our sponsors in a minute, and we're going to get the show going. But we're in there. We're standing towards the back of like the floor seats with these people with these people that are going nuts and and they're like no but there was open scoring so the the round ends and they're all like come on john come on john they're all john dotson fans right john dotson really turns up the the pressure in the fifth round he takes that fifth round and i'm like he took the fifth round guys don't worry you're gonna get to see one more fight because in this in this sport they go to six rounds there's no there's no draws in in the uh title fights and then there's like a long pause and there's like a long break and like a minute goes by and it looks like they're getting ready to announce a winner and i'm like what the fuck is going on here and then After we just souped everybody up yeah we had like just, three it, tables screaming like ah, yeah they're like yeah let's go six 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 they're like yelling out six six one more one more um then they announce it as a draw and they all that like a few of them are looking over at us and I'm like, Hey, I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Cause this is not normal. It's supposed to be a six round. Turns out that the athletic commission in, in uh, New Mexico said they do, they don't approve the, the sudden death round or the extra round, whatever you want to call it. So unfortunately we didn't know that until it happened. And then I um, ran up. I was like trying to get somebody's attention that was in and around the ring. I happened to get Kevin Smith looked over and I was going like this. What do you give you the no? And he, he was like this. Finger? He's doing this. He's pointing at the ground. He's like doing things with his hand. And I was like, and he, he must have read my lips to commission. He's like, yeah, there's just the rules. Yeah, and I was like, too damn bad. it. Son so of a bitch. you know what that does? That sets up a rematch between the two of them. It was an exciting fight. It does. Um, Dagoberto wants it in Miami. I don't understand why he would get the home field advantage after not taking the belt from the champ, but we'll see where they rebook that one. Uh, let's shout out our sponsors real quick because yeah, we have three guests. We have three, three guests tonight. Um, two of them returning, one of them a first time guest. We're gonna have Idris Wasi coming on, who's gonna be fighting Jay Jackson in Clearwater. Oh. We're gonna have the animal Travis Thompson coming on, who's gonna be fighting uh Abby Velasquez again down in Clearwater. And we're gonna have Katarina Liner, who's fighting Jessica Borga. All three of those fights are on that Clearwater card, which is wow. awesome. And before we do anything else, and before we bring on Idris, he's in the uh comments in the um waiting room right now, waiting to come in. We're going to shout out our sponsors, which is obviously Bucked Up Energy, Bucked Up Supplements. Go to buckedup.com. Get some of the cleanest supplements on the market, some of the best tasting, high ca- – there's like a really high caffeine uh, amount in most of their uh, sugar-free energy drinks. Um, the pre-workouts are fantastic. I've been, dr- I've been drinking the um, – it's called Swole Whip, Swole Whip Buck Feed. It's a whey protein – Super tasty. Um, I really stand by all their products. So go to buckedup.com, use promo code Mike and Mish20 and get 20% off your total purchase. Hey, dynamic life, sexual health, weight loss, and anti aging. Retake control of your life by reaching optimal health. Visit www.livedynamic.com. That's L I V dynamic. It's the only online platform where you can become a patient in under 20 seconds. Also, check out their Instagram page at Live Dynamic. That's L I V dynamic on Instagram. 
That's right. So why don't we go ahead, Mike? You want to want to go ahead and bring in our first guest of the evening? Yeah, yeah. I think I will. I think I will. So our first guest of the evening is Idris Wasi. First time we saw him was down in Orlando. We are yeah. going to talk to him in just a moment right yeah. after this. <laughs> What's going up? on? What's up, man? Hey, welcome back to the show, man. How are you doing? Good. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm here. I've been through a lot this week. You've been, been through, through a lot. So, so let's get right into it, man. You're back for your fourth trip to the BKFC Squared Circle. You're taking on a really uh, tough veteran and Jay Jackson. Um, you've had some tough fights on your in your record so far with the BKFC. Um, what's going on with you? Uh, what's what's up with your week and um, and how you feeling heading into a, a fight with a guy like Jay? I think we're losing him here. I think we're losing him. You think so? I I know so. <laughs> well, yes, we have lost. Wasi. He froze up. He's gone. All right. So we're going to tell him to back out of your link and then come back in. And we're going to bring you in because you froze up and we lost you. So go ahead, Idris. Come back in. Always yeah. be ma the magic of the Internet, dude. He's you know what? Sometimes when you're in your car, you're really playing with fire. I mean, you know, you got to get to a spot. You got to get to it. If you're in your car, pull into a Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could tell by. Hold on. All right. Here, here we go. Here he is. What'd you say? Hey, there he is. There he is. You said there you could tell by what? When when you when you answered that question, you were like, oh, "I've been through a lot, man." I was gonna say, <laughs> I don't think he's having too good of a week here. What's going on, man? Tell you us. Could tell by the way you answered that question that something was up. Yeah. Um, just. Crazy stuff, but I'm all good. Let, let's get into it. Kyle? Well, well, you know, it seems like um your last fight you had a full camp, right? Or or was it an, another no, short notice? It was a day notice. My last two f fights with Bare Knuckle has been all been short notice. Okay. Tomahawk was a week, and the other dude was a day. Jesus, man. So this time you're actually going to get a, a, a full camp? No, it, it's been about four weeks. I was supposed to fight July 15th. I mean, uh, March 15th in the, the Miami car because there was two middleweights on the car that lost opponents, but they're both pussies. The first one is, uh, what was this? Oof. We lost him again. He's about to call somebody out. Come on, man. <laughs> We need. <laughs> oh, Idris, Idris, Idris huh? you 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 froze up again, right? Right before you said the person's name, you froze up. You your uh your your signals in and out. This is um, this is tough, Mike. This is tough. Yep. Yep. All right. So we're gonna have to we'll bring him out of here. All you right. know. Okay. So he was he was saying that he was supposed to fight March fifteenth. So he had what? March. He said 15th. he had one full month. He had four four weeks to get ready. So yeah, but more than a, more than a uh, a week, more than a day. 
But he was training for the March 15th fight, though, right? Yeah, so he yeah, was yeah. coming out of a camp, didn't fight March 15th, got rebooked to April 12th. Doesn't that add four more? Well, we got to ask this. Gotta... Hopefully, we get some. Uh, He's some not showing betters. up on this. He's not showing up on the screen. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This service, this service <laughs> is terrible. I'm, I'm at the house. And it's just not working. But yeah, real quickly before it messes up. So I was supposed to fight March 15th. Both dudes said no, and they picked somebody that was way worse than me. And um, so that made me mad. And then they 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 called me for Jay Jackson at 175. I said no because I don't even know if I could make 175. So then I said, let's do 85. And that was four weeks. And um, I'm really not – like, I didn't really want the fight. I wanted – I don't know. I wanted March 15th because it's Ramadan. And I am Muslim, but um, it is what it is. Oh, but so I, so training camp right now is tough for you because you can't eat or drink from sun up to sundown, correct? No, because I I didn't fast because of the fight, so I'm missing oh. Ramadan. I okay. should have, but I'm missing I'm missing Ramadan because of the fight. So the last four weeks have actually been going good. I've been sparring guys at Uriah Favors Gym. I've been uh, sparring a lot of um, Russian 170 killers. All right. Over Is... at Alpha Male? Yeah, because I, I live in Sacramento. Nice. This, I mean, I can, I can imagine the type of uh, caliber of fighter that you get over there to train with. That place still popping off or what? Because I feel like there's some guys from there that still fight often, but all like the, the big name guys, a lot of the guys that used to fight that we all really know about, like a lot of those guys are, are basically done and some of them have left. Yeah. But. It's not like what it used to be. Like when I first started there in 2009, the, my first day I saw Jeremy Stevens at the front desk and um, you, you always see people, but now um, like the other day when I went there, you see Song Yadong, he's stretching. Then you see, I spar with Slava Klaus. He fights at 55. My boy wrecked him, though, Mike Davis. <laughs> How about uh, Josh Emmett? Is he up in there? I barely see Josh because, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen Josh in him. Ever since the Bryce fight, I haven't seen him. So he just kind of like a, a walk off home run, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, he's an older guy. Maybe he's injured a lot, but I don't see him. Who else do I see? I see Max Griffin a lot. Nice. Um, so preparation for this one with, um, with guys like that around you, with a team like that around you, um, obviously you're not coming off a day's notice or a week's notice. So you are feeling a little bit better about this one, I would imagine. But I want to yeah. ask you, uh, what, what are your thoughts on Jay? Like, did you know Jay Jackson? Do you know him? Are you friendly with Jay? Or um, is this the first time you're going to be running into him? Well, um, before my first bare knuckle fight in, in Orlando, I was looking up bare knuckle fighters and I and I saw an um, like a little countdown. It was Jay versus uh, Warren. So and when I seen him, I was like, oh, the, both these dudes would be good opponents. And then when I seen him on the card after the weigh-ins, I walked up to him, gave him a handshake. I said, hey, I saw your little thing on the Bare Knuckle app. I said, it'd be dope to fight you. He had a really good, strong handshake. I said, man, you got some strong-ass hands. And he laughed. He was super humble. And that was that. I didn't think my fat ass can actually make 185. <laughs> yeah, and man, then, I noticed and, that, um, uh, you know, preparing for this, that you guys were both on that BKC huh? 25 card. And you can see Jay Jackson up there. He was going to fight Janowski, and you fought McAllister. And I remember that night. You guys are both on that card together. Yeah, and you got the first round knockout in that one, too. Uh, you got, I can't barely. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, no. Oh, here he is. He's back. He's back. He's back. Can, can you hear us, Idris? Yes. All right. Yeah, your your service is pretty, yes. pretty, pretty spotty, See? my friend. Oh my god! Oh my god! We so, might have to cut this one short and go to the animal, man. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna have to. So, if Adris, if you're watching right now, if you get into a spot where you have better service, jump back on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to a little transition video right here, and uh, when we come back, we will be joined by the animal, Travis Thompson.
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel like with BKFC, every fight has potential to be fight of the night. I think that you don't even have to know the guys. You enjoy it from top to bottom. I mean, I, I couldn't even pick. I mean, they were all great fights. I enjoyed it. I hate to give you that horrible stock answer, but they were all great. They were, I agree. There was a couple of really nice knockouts. Travis Thompson brings it every that, single give time. Give me that. Give me, no, no, give me the mic. Travis the Animal Thompson, I'll give him fight of the night because he's, he's a Pottstown boy. He's been fighting his way up. Now that you said that, you know, he's been fighting his way up, and he's also such a character, and he's so full of charisma and just anger. He loves to fight. Best dressed guy you ever see. And that guy wanted that really badly. I mean, we saw it at the weigh-ins. So if I had to pick, because I don't want to give you the horrible answer I just gave you, I'd say Travis the Animal Thompson. The guy's been grinding. He's been here since day one, and it's good to see him get his, uh, get his due, man, especially in a featured match. I'm glad he was up there. It was great. And shout out to Shady Grady, too, because he, yep. he took the damage and he kept going forward. And he, he could have almost won that fight at times. No, I agree. It was, it, it was uh, fun to watch. I'm going to look at the animal over there right now, man, in his suit. Hey, animal, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, I want to tell you right something. It's important. Right come here. In. Step in here. Oh, We're bring, him right, here. bring him right in here. Bring him right in here. The man, the myth, the legend. But they the said, animal. what do you have as the second fight of the night? And I'm like, I don't know. They're all so good. No, no, I should be the fight of the well, night. Well, hold on. Oh, yeah, so, that, he, said, he said you weren't. Whoa. He said it. Hey, 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 hey. There was a, there was a world champion heavy, uh, yeah, okay. heavyweight title uh, fight. Okay. But listen. I said other than the main event. which Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Who had the fucking crowd going? That would be you. Okay. That would also be him, well, I was but then you. He I was he, going nuts. I had the fucking... Was, this is his home crowd. How many people cheered for him when he came out? Did anybody? Was there anybody? <laughs> you had a whole section. Okay, but then I came out. Everyone's fucking making noise. I don't know. I want to say something else. You know, I, I, this medal's beautiful. Congratulations. But I want to move it to the side for a second because I think this might be the best-dressed man in BKFC. You know, uh, he's the absolutely. animal, right? He's the animal. It says it on my tie clip. Oh, it does. That's, oh, it does. That's animal. cool. So he's the animal. <laughs> but I think once in a while, like I told him the other day, he should be tailor-made, Travis Thompson. Tailor-made from head to toe, Dude, baby. And here's the thing. Like, I don't even need the fucking glasses. This is the, <laughs> they just this look is good. This is the studious. GQ. Yo, he's got, yo, I look smart. What type of fucking smart person gets punched in the fucking face for money? <laughs> this, guy. this guy. This guy. That's why I'm called it, the fucking animal. Yo, <laughs> how many other people talk like this? How many people put on a fucking show? From start to finish, before the fight, during the fight, after fight, as soon as my fight's over, I don't even get changed. I don't get in this shit. I go around, take pictures, do autographs, do he all does. that shit. He's not no lying. I saw you out there that. doing it. He was asking Let me for see a sharpie. Dude. Let me see your hands. You see this hand right here? That's probably That's your blood fucking... right there on my oh, hand. Oh, never oh, wash that hand. I, uh... Yo, I'll sign it. Do you want me to sign it? <laughs> I got the animal's blood Yo, right there. No, you can never wash right, that. Right, ever. No, no. Can I'm I cut that off? get a tattoo Can I cut it off? Yeah, I'm going to sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put on eBay. Yeah, put that picture right there. Put that shit on eBay. Yeah. Give it up for my man, Travis. Dude, the you're the man. You got a fourth one of those to hang up That's at home right. now. This thing, BKFC OG. fucking great. That's OG. Right. OG. OG. Congratulations. OG. Thanks a lot. You guys appreciate everyone coming out tonight. You guys apparently. I mean, obviously you guys. But I want to thank everyone that came out tonight. It was a great time. Had a great show. Um, yeah, fight night. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. <laughs> All that. right, man. Thank you for your many years time. I think... I think I think that I crashed my own interview. How did I do that? I had my own interview crashed. Hey, -o. there, there he, is. he goes. <laughs> a little blast from the past, there, animal. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. I love that was it. a fucking great time up there in Al Allegheny Casino. That was a fucking good time. I hate that piece of shit. I knew exactly which fight that was. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> For, <laughs> for those who you are wondering who he's talking about, he's talking about Shady Grady. Don't ever, say oh. it. Don't ever say that name. Hey, welcome back to the show, Travis. You know we love having you on here. It's been a minute. I love coming on. You were back, yes. We yes, love yes. to it, it, love you. Gotta that go. You were coming on. Um. So anyway, let's get let's get into this, dude. You, you've been making your rounds on all the podcasts. I feel like uh, everybody's been asking you the same damn thing. But uh, you're back again, man. I mean, last time we talked to you, you were like, I, I believe you said you have one more run in you. You want to go? You want to go take a run at a title shot? So um, they give you a rematch with one of one of the L's that you want to avenge. Uh, were you? Was this somebody that you asked for? Uh, no. They they said to me. I said absolutely. He hasn't. He they hasn't fought. Want to get him back in there? I said absolutely. I definitely want to bring that one back. All right. Definitely had to bring that one back. Yeah. 
and you're going to be down in Clearwater. You're all, you're Say, stomping I'm ground. I'm sorry. This sounds off. The sound's not bad. Hold on one second. Oh, this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're having, we're having some really right good. Now. We're having some great luck tonight with our, uh, our guests you. and their service, Thanks. Mike. There we go. Now we're good. I'm sorry, guys. My alarm just went off to let me know that the uh, podcast is on. Oh, nice. Are we well, good now? Steve, very, very, very punctual uh, animal. Gotta be a job, right? A no, yeah, so I, a, a, a punctual, well-dressed animal and an angry little guy, right. <laughs> as Kevin Smith says in the comments section. Uh, how you feeling about this one? Heading into this one and fighting in your kind of your home turf. Uh, this is definitely somewhat. My home turf. I mean, uh, I'm literally training maybe 200 yards from where it's going to be at. I no train. I train at Battle Zone with JR Ridge, you know, with Reber, with uh, Mundell stops in. Uh, Mike Heckert's going to be there. Q's there. A lot of the guys that are on the card are all at my gym. No kidding. So everyone's, it's kind of a whole team atmosphere heading yeah, in there. Yeah. I don't think he knows this, but I will be the home side. I will be in the blue corner. So it's going to be a fucking big, big deal for when he sees that. It's been a long time since the first go round with you two. Um, both yep. different fighters. It was a, it was our third fight, both of us. We were both one and one at the time. June right twenty second, two thousand nineteen. Sounds wow. right. Jesus, man. And now, uh, well, yeah, you guys are two totally, you know, different fighters. Now, would you say that you're a different fighter, or is it the same old animal uh, that you I'm were the before? Same fucking person you always see. What do you think I'm gonna do? You think I'm gonna dance around the fucking ring? No, I'm going straight forward, right at him. Same thing I always do. Problem is, we like to hear. run this time. And here's the other thing: what you guys don't realize, the first time I fought him, I didn't really have a camp. I've had five weeks up to this point, so I still have another week to go. So I have a six-week camp, a real camp. Um, I've been training. I've been training minimum, minimum twice a day, usually three times a day, six days a week. Um, I'm ready to roll. My and you spark you. You're sparring with all those guys you mentioned, uh, Reber, JR. They're all giving you rounds. Absolutely. Uh, this other guy, Craig, that's also supposed to be fighting on the card too. So I, I make sure I got. I make sure that when I spar, I spar the person I'm fighting. So JR Ridge is a, you know, pretty much just like Abby, except he's stronger, and faster than Abby. So Abby, the only thing Abby has, uh, he's southpaw, and uh, JR is orthodox. So I also have a dude that's an amateur, a phenomenal amateur that's southpaw, that's fast as shit, that I spar with him as well. So I figure if I can go with these guys and I see the punches that they throw, Abby's not going to throw anything new. What are, oh, what Julian are you even, down here too. Julian's down here too. He's got about. Oh about. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. just actually, they announced his. Uh, he's got a fight on the Knuckle Mania Four card yep. coming up. They yep. just announced that one. Exactly. They actually announced quite a few of those uh, fights for that card coming up. So they're really rounding that one out as well. Um, yeah, I can't even imagine what the atmosphere must be like that with the names you guys you just dropped that are in there with yourself and all those guys. Um, I mean, you and Reber went six rounds with each other. You guys know each other well. So you you, um, you had a friendship before your fight. Is the friendship before the fight, during the fight, after the fight? Yeah. It, it even one we each other up. What's that? I said, is, is the is like the friendship even better now that you beat each other up Absolutely. for? Real? Absolutely, we we that night we were hanging out. There's not there was it was something that had to happen. Who was gonna fight for the belt next is what I was for, and uh, but yeah, you know what? That's that's what it was supposed to be, right? But Reber is now. I, I yeah, I know, but it's just the way it is. I know there's there's a lot of politics involved. I know what's going on, um, but. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, your your thoughts on the champ? I'm not trying to make you look past Abby, but thoughts I, on the champ, I, Keith? I don't really give a fuck about the champ right now because all I'm focused on is Abby. That's all I care about. That's all I'm going for is just to defeat Abby. After that, then we can talk about the champ. Uh, that will be my belt. I don't care if it fucking takes me 20 fucking fights. I will have the belt. Oh, that kind of answered my question then, because I was going to say, hypothetically, right? You win. How many fights do you think you'd have to win before you get that Here, title shot? Here's the thing. Here, here's what people like. They're like, oh, well, you have to you have to win again if you want to fight for the belt. The fuck if I do? What was what was Keith ranked when he fought for the belt? 
Uh, was he know. even was, ranked? Was he, he wasn't. Ranked? Yeah, he, I was going to say he wasn't. Exactly. So it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, I, I listen. Don't really give a shit. I do. Travis, it. I agree with you, and and I and I I I agree with you, and I do kind of stick up for the business side of the house. If if the if it makes sense, just make the fight. Who gives a fuck about? <laughs> Any of that other shit. You just saw it this past weekend. Dagoberto yes. Aguero just fought John Dotson. He was 1-0. Oh. It and played against were, a lot of people's and, uh, and, arguments. Yeah. A I lot, of, pe- it, a lot it, of people hated it, and he went five rounds with the fucking it, champ. I mean, come great, on. Great job. Listen, I'm not going to – I'm not saying that to dog anybody. I'm just saying, like, listen, if you want me to fucking fight, I'm fighting for better. I'm not fighting. It's – I mean – the ball's in my court. I do what the fuck I want. You don't want me to fight for belt? Fine. See ya. And Travis, you're in the top five right now. So realistically, it doesn't. There's no. There's no rule out there that says it's the number one guy has to have the fucking no. title fight. You no. are all contenders. You are all ranked contenders in the top five. Sure. They could. They could justifiably rank anybody in that top. I mean, uh, book anybody in that top five against the champ, and nobody should have a fucking word to say about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the other thing is, you guys, I mean, you guys know this. It's still a new company. Like, just because people are ranked in the top five, how many fights do people really have? Like, I have one of the most in, in, in the, you know, the Bantam or what, what fucking weight class, man? The Bantam weight? Bantam weight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I Bantam. have probably most fights. Reggie might have the same amount. But it's like, you don't yeah, have. Yeah, this will be your 11th. This is 11. That's yeah, true. it's you're you're absolutely right about that. And uh yeah, it, when it comes to um making sense out of matchmaking, these guys are absolutely looking at um who's gonna put, what's that who's, who's gonna put asses in seats, who's gonna put on the views? That's what you gotta go. It's a business program. Like that's it's not just oh, this is a great fight. It's like, well, is this fight gonna make money? Doesn't make sense. That's what you got to also look at too. It's now, a huge part because without asses and seats and people watching the damn fights after about three, four shows, we wouldn't have any shows. I'm on so many fucking fights. There'd be no fucking shows anymore <laughs> if there was no one watching the fights. That's why. No, I man. You, yeah, you're always in fight, fight of the night, fight that's of the year type fights. So that's why they love putting you on there. You, you probably got more rounds than anybody. I, I actually take. A lot of pride in that so my job I, i'm sure you guys have heard me say it my job is to put on a show before the fight during the fight and after the fight so before the fight i do all these podcasts i love doing podcasts i will sign anybody and everybody's autographs i enjoy that i, lo- I love the pictures i love all these podcasts it's a great time i do the fight i love fighting i i just love doing it i mean everyone's eyes are on you and the other and your opponent so it's it's great and then afterwards I, I've done it plenty of times where I didn't even get stitches yet. And I go and I just start signing the autographs, get my drinks, have a good time. Oh, Travis, you still got to do stitches. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Forgot about that. <laughs> I just don't care. I enjoy it. And that's why I think out of my 10 fights, I think I've had eight bonuses. So 80% of the time I've had a bonus. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, a- I'm actually doing a little math right now on you because uh, your your career is pretty fucking insane. Appreciate and, that. And it's 5, 10, 15. So you got 20, 21. You you have, I'm trying to see how many total rounds. Reggie probably more than me only because he doesn't get knockouts. He, he goes the distance. Kyle's doing on the fly math with no glasses, Travis. No oh. glasses. Glasses yeah. broke. So be wary of the numbers, but I'm sure they're going to be 33. nice and close. He's using the 39 big rounds. Awesome. 39. <laughs> 39. You, you have 39 rounds of fighting in the fucking bare knuckle squared circle. I, I got to say, you got to be right up there amongst the top. I appreciate that. I, you know, I love it. I love every bit of it. Dave knows that, you know, when I get, <laughs> I get flustered. I get annoyed. I don't hear from them. I just go to the shop and bother them. I start writing my name on the board. Nate gets pissed off. He's like, you can't just come in here and write your name on the board. I'm like, I didn't. You guys wrote my name on the board. 
<laughs> <laughs> He's like, fuck you. We didn't. Like, you got to stop doing that. I'm like, you're not else? in the main event at Knuckle Mania, Travis, against Alvis. We are against Mike Perry. We know. What do you mean? I put you guys did that shit. Yeah, I know. I was like, what, what are you talking about? I thought I was supposed to be in LA. Yeah, hey, we needed did... to get over there at some point. But we've never made it there. It's probably, it's, I think it's only like a five hour drive from one day. We're going to have to just like, just show up, show up at the office. Right, do it. Yeah. Hey, you've been there since the beginning and uh, you've known Dave since you were a kid, basically. Well, not, well, no, I wasn't a kid. I mean, compared to how now, but I mean, I was, I was shit. I was 23, 24. 20, that's still kind of a kid. I mean, I'm 42. And I, I look got at the bunch, people I got a bunch of... that are early 20s <laughs> as their kids hey, now. Yo, thanks for wishing me a happy birthday, by the way. Oh, uh, we forgot Dad. about your birthday. My birthday is April Fool's. Just kidding. No, we didn't. All uh, right. It's the day after April Fool's? Yes. No, it's April Fool's Day. Oh, it's April Fool's. All right. Oh. See, boom. Okay, cool. But I'm 41. I mean, so I'm yeah, up to- See, you, you got to consider a 22-year-old a kid, right? What's that? <laughs> you, think, I, you don't consider a 22-year-old a kid now that you're 41? Yeah, I know. You're right. You're right. I do. But Being uh, a 23 year, 23 year veteran in the army, like 23 years into the military, when a 21-year-old walks into the office, I'm like, oh, this fucking kid. Yeah, <laughs> dude you know what's funny is we we've had a lot of high school kids coming in because they do this for like their senior projects yeah. and stuff like that they have to work a certain amount of hours and our facility is one of the places they go and we've had uh four high school students and we were just talking to them, to them uh today or about them when they left not bad but we were just trying to figure out like who do we think's gonna join who do we think's not going to and, and the thing is like i was like I talked to like three out of four of them. They have no friggin' idea what the hell they're doing when yeah. from the they don't know what they're doing today, never mind next week and in the future. They're so confused on life, which is a good thing because you know, at least they're not like, oh uh, you know, they actually think they know everything. These kids are like, I don't know, I think I'll be a software engineer. I was like, Are you into software engineering? No, I'll, I'll, like, know, uh, <laughs> I'll pick it up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it seems like something I could just learn off a YouTube video. I've yeah. seen it on YouTube, exactly. It's That's crazy. But but since you since like what I was getting at is um you were there at the beginning with those guys. You've okay. been there the whole ride and now they're in the like they're in the middle of like six events in 8 weeks. They're That's pumping right. out events like fucking crazy now. They're selling out giant 10,000 seat venues. They're going to Bulgaria and selling out giant arenas over there. What is your thoughts like can you when you first started with these guys, did you honestly believe that this is like what they were going to be just six years later i've said it since day one i knew that they could do it um because i know dave uh and junior is just as pushy as senior like when they have their mind made up and they're going to do something they do it and they do it 100 percent. they don't take the easy route they uh go 100 percent at what they want to do and they get it done. Uh, they've always been that way. Um, I'm very proud of them. Um, not that it really means anything, but you know, I'm very proud of those guys. You know, I mean, I've known I've known Junior when he was a kid, and to see him like the man that he is now, you know, he's got a son of his own now. Like, it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And uh, to watch what they do as a team is amazing. And that's just not Junior and Senior. I mean, the entire team. I I love going to the office. I know I give everybody a lot of shit, but it, it's really cool. I like watching them because I've known a lot of these guys for a long time. It it must be pretty amazing because uh, I actually I think about this often because I'm always thinking about this show, right? Yeah. And I think about the sport uh, often. I'm always looking at everybody's profiles, thinking about stuff. But I I do think about the production crew all the time. And I think about, you know, what they're doing, what they did different. Cause we just came back from Albuquerque and like, I just look at everything they're doing. I'm always watching everybody and what they're doing. Who's doing, who's saying what, who's moving this, who's putting that up, what the lights, how the lights are fixed up, how, you know, just any little uh, nuance, any, anything that they change about the show. I feel like I notice it because I'm just so intertwined in this uh, world of bare knuckle fighting championship. And I thought to myself, like, to get a group of people together where every single person in each one of their jobs 
are so good at what they do and they really care about their yeah. actual job and making it better because you see like they don't just say hey we're going to rig the lights up like this and that's how it's going to be for 15 years well they no, 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 no they rig the lights up and then the next time they got new lights and then two three fights after that they got new lights and they just keep on adding and trying new things and just expanding you know and and same thing with the graphics and the video and the cool like i've been i've actually been in the office like i'm probably not supposed to say it, but i've been in there when there's like certain calls and stuff are going on and it's really cool to like listen to junior talk about like the shows and everything and he'll say like well we got to do something different with the i didn't like the lighting i didn't like this i didn't like that and i mean he takes it very seriously and he's like no we're gonna do this we're gonna do this that and the other and i'm like i knew that little shit when like he was like bouncing in the ring with me like we just play around i was like now this kid's telling telling everybody what to do and they're listening they have to like he knows what he's doing and it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, you know, that you, you got to improve. You got to do, you can't always be the, yeah, they, they're you the best promotion, the best. but you can't stay the best. No, you have to keep growing if you want to be the best and stay the best. And they are have to. At, at time after time. And uh, I'm excited and I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, I mean, you said I did the first one. I did the first international one. I did the first Florida one. I did the first New York one. Like I, I'll it's probably crazy. first Philadelphia one or the first Pennsylvania one. Like, oh well, if they didn't put you on the first Pennsylvania will. one, that'd be a fucking travesty. Well, I'll, yeah, a travesty, get yeah, it? A travesty. I, I, it's a travesty. <laughs> It'd be a travesty. My whole uh, life is a joke and a travesty. Oh man, yeah, um, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I fucking lost. Blew his mind thought. with that. His blows. Yeah. Whole, his no, whole no, no. I was. Right I up. was gonna bring something up there, but I completely lost it. Um. Yeah. No. We we always noticed that. That's why I'm excited that they're coming the Mohegan Sun finally, because that's me and Mike's neck of the woods. I, and I keep I telling. On that one, I would have loved to have been there. Obviously, they're not gonna put me a month out. You know. Right. From, from another one, but I did. You know, I'm always down. Like, Unless you knock this not, guy's it's head not off. too far. <laughs> like I was talking about like having a four or five week camp. I was like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? This is the first time in my eleven fights I've had a, a six week camp. I usually have two, three weeks. The one time I had four days. Like, what the fuck? Like, really? Do, so what do you, that's you get the extra time. Sorry, Kyle. You get the extra time to train right up to the fight, but you also got to think about the fight longer. So. Does that annoy you at all? No, no, it doesn't. What it no. does, you get to critique what you are doing. So, yeah. um, like I take, it sounds really stupid, but when I leave Pennsylvania, I come to Florida. This is a job when I'm here. I don't go out on boats. I don't, I mean, I have uh, plenty of opportunities to do this stuff. I don't, I, uh, Randy Harris wanted me to go with them to Gatorland. Cause he had a bunch of the uh, pilots there. They were going to go, they went to Gatorland. They wanted me to go. I was like, I greatly appreciate it. Cause I love Randy. I was like, you know, you know me, I'm not going to go. He's like, well, why not? I was like, cause I don't like to enjoy myself. Like you're like, this is a job to me. Like it sounds really bad, but when I'm here, I'm here to work. So I work out three times a day. You know, at minimum two times a day, usually three, six days a week. Sundays, Golf. you know, I take a rest. So I usually go running and I go till I crunch fitness. So I still work out even on my days off. I don't want to have a day off because then I start thinking and overanalyzing things. And I don't want to do that. Um, and as far as the fight goes, like when, when I'm in camp, when I'm doing what I'm doing, I do what the coach tells me to do. That's his job. His job is to tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. The only things I do, I will critique myself when I know I'm doing something wrong. Like uh, that's, that's what helps when you have the full camp and the full time to do it. So you pick up the little things that you're doing wrong. Like you're leaving your right foot behind your back leg behind. So you got to bring that foot forward when you're stepping in to throw your punches. Otherwise you're going to do an arm punch. You don't want to do that. Bring your ass with you so you can connect and put them the fuck out. Do you think that Abby is coming into this fight with a chip on his shoulder, seeing as he's coming off of three losses in a row, even though like people hear three losses in a row, if you go look at his record, it's Dat win, 
Reggie Barnett and Gian Herrera. So those are fucking animals, but he's coming off of three losses, but he already has a win against you. So do you think that Listen, he's, what yeah. do you think he's thinking right now going into so, this? What I think he's thinking, I'm 41. It, it ain't gonna be shit. I'm, you know, he's 30, I'm 41. It's gonna be a breeze for him. But if you know me, I might be 41. I guarantee I fight with just as much energy as he does. I have more power than he does. I'm the bigger, stronger person. I'm going to bring it to him. Um, I'm going to give him everything he can handle. And uh, pressure breaks pipes. Um, so I'm going to do I'm going to bring nothing but pressure. I'm going to break them. Um, I have no pressure on me. Um, he's, you know, he got to have, here's another thing that kind of gets me going. Like he had an Easter with his family, uh, someone's birthday, you know, I, I missed Easter with my family. I missed my birthday with my family. If I don't get home in time the Sunday after our fight, because I'm driving home, if I don't get home in time, I'm going to miss my daughter's birthday party. So, like, it, I'm working, right? But this is still hell for me because I'm missing out on everything. I'm missing my family. I'm missing time with my kids, my wife. And uh, I'm missing work back home. Uh, it, so I'm doing whatever I can while I'm here to ensure victory, uh, to get it done as quickly as, as possible. So I can get home and see my family. Pre prepping for a fight where you must be a motherfucker because he, they, they, all your opponents have to know that they are going into like a dirty, nasty war, whether, whether they, whether it ends in one or two rounds oh. or it goes a full five or six, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's. But that's my pride. That's what I've always. That's what I've always tried to do. I don't want to knock somebody out right away. I don't want that. I don't want to have a one punch, two second fight. That's boring. That's stupid. Cool, you knock the guy out. I would like to strateg strategically take someone apart first, and then put him down. That's why, like when I fought uh, David uh, Diaz, I could have put him out. I didn't care to. I wanted to. Put him to the test. I wanted to test him, and I wanted to, you know, hurt him. That's what I like to do. I like to put on a show. That's why I got. That's why I got fight of the year for that one from you yeah. guys. You, know, you, you, you put him out of commission for a while too. He was a. Uh, he was. He was pretty banged up, and he's finally making his return. I don't think he's fought since that fight. Oh, no, he hasn't. And that's the thing. Like people always wonder about, like you know, how you can be so durable. This that, <clears throat> done eleven fights, like. You saw after I fought Reber, like everyone has ice on their hands. Okay, I do this every time. As soon as the fight was over, I was doing it. You're not hurting my hands. I hate concrete. This is bone on bone. Bone's a lot softer than concrete. So if I can punch concrete, I can punch your skull. Fucking animal. <laughs> yeah, see, he, naturally he calls you animal. You see that? You fucking animal. Oh, that's I've I've had that nickname since I was in high school. I think I was a sophomore in high school and I got that nickname, the animal. I got that from wrestling because I I just don't know how to quit. And I like I've always been that type of person. Uh I would be wrestling with like the heavyweights and I was a one oh three pounder. You know, I if you something, so can I. I've always had that mentality. And I will always have that mentality. Just because so, you're stronger than me doesn't mean I can't do it also. And I prove it wrong every time. You know, the the, the number one ranked 155 pounder, Tony Loco Soto, says, I got a I got a bone for you, baby girl. I think he. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. Uh, what does What's that he... mean, Travis? He's got a bone for me, huh? I guess <laughs> so. <laughs> Fuck that means. I think he's he just flirting. Punch I think he's... Papa. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe he's getting flirty. Flirty Tony. <laughs> flirty Tony. It's a new well... side of Tony. We haven't seen that yet, uh, yet till today. I see Michael Laramore is in the in the comments. You think Michael Laramore is going to get a late notice fight on this card or what? Or some Knuckle Mania four action? Do you know well, him? He, he's he's a one thirty five pounder also, isn't he? Is that, I believe so. Was it Big P or whatever? What do they call him? I forget Papa G. Papa, Papa G. G. Uh, he's he's an exciting fighter, you know. That's one thing I, I do like to see. They're getting a lot more people involved in the sport. I do like seeing it. Um, it's it's great, and you know, I hope he does get a fight. That'd be cool. 
Well, the card that you're on is stacked. If everybody's <laughs> not making it out there, they got to be tuned in because it's, it's the return of the animal. It's the return of the Marine. It's like um, you got a, a debuting Katarina Liner who's going to be com coming on in a minute. She's fighting Jessica Borga. There's a lot of really awesome matchups in this. And, and yours, you, you know, every time you're in the squared circle, it's, you know, fight of the year, fight of the night possibilities, the return to Alvin Brito and, and uh, Jafar Fort. It's a fucking unbelievably stacked card for oh, the for the tradition, for the for the bare knuckle fans out there. You know, what I mean, there's those bare knuckle cards that are built for the bare knuckle diehards. And then there's Knuckle Mania 4, which. Trust me, bare knuckle diehards are excited about knuckle mania for more, you know, as much as anybody. But this That's may not doing. have the, yeah, this All may the, not have the mainstream, I the mainstream, have, but it has the bare knuckle mainstream. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like you showed Q and Heckard on there. I train with both them as well. See the this camp has been great. I mean, we've done hell. We've gone to, um, I shit you not, we went to, uh, I think it was a Hilton. We are running stairs. So it's 16 and a half flights of stairs, right? So you did it eight times, up and down, up and down times. I was the first one. I started third and I was the first one done. The second person was 10 and a half flights behind me. That's the wrestler in you, though, right? right? Isn't that the, the high school wrestler in me? Like, I ran more stairs than I ever wanted to run in my entire life, and I threw up more more times than anybody I know. I, I It's just... Uh, I, and that's that's how, again, that's how I got my nickname. Dan was from wrestling, was in high school. And that's just yeah. my mentality. When I start something, I don't stop it until I'm done. So other people like JR, you know, JR... Dude, there were kids. There's was, there was like a 19, 20 year old kid doing stairs. He started out first. He was second, but he was 10 and a half uh, flights behind me. You know, I was yeah. I was right with JR. I was I started third right behind JR. And we go up the first five steps and we're starting to go down. He's like, dude, just go past me. I was like, no, no, bro, you're good. You're good. He's like, no, go the fuck past me. <laughs> the time. I was like, all right, fine. I went past him. I never looked back. Kept I love going. it, man. I love it. Uh, Travis, I wanted to thank you for coming back on here as always, but I want you to uh, give your final words to everybody that's paying attention and who's going to be paying attention to April 12th in Clearwater. Uh, final words from you. Uh, final words. Tune in. Watch. You're going to watch a great fight. Um, the animal's here. The animal's here to stay. Um, I want to thank all my sponsors. My buddy, uh, Aaron Kling. I'm staying at his place down here while I'm here. He's always sponsored me, Kling Law. Kling Law. Uh, yep, exactly. Yeah. I got uh, a rap company that's rapping the Dodge Magnum, so it's gonna be great for the uh, for the uh, fight. So that's gonna be looking awesome. I got Steadfast Roofing hooking me up, and I got my guys from back home, Eminem Lube and Auto. They always take care of my cars. They take care of everything for me. They got me on the road so I can get down here to Florida, and I'll be going back looking good in style with my new rap nice nice fine. nice and i'm sure you'll be dressed to the t just to the nines when you get down there uh we're looking from last time that blue one that you guys just put out there nice. i like that suit all yeah. right well thank you so much for coming on mike you have anything else for travis travis always love having you on love seeing you wish we could be down there to hang out but you know we're gonna run into each other Eventually, once again, we will hang out with bare knuckle John Wick, the animal Travis Thompson. Thank you for coming on. And when we come back, we will be joined by hopefully I say this right, Katarina Lehner. Katarina, no, I say I'm gonna do my very best to come out of Connecticut. Uh, I'd love to come, yes, see do that. I think Reber is gonna be fighting there also, so that'd be great to uh go watch Reber for once. Um, yeah. I I'll see you guys. Thanks yeah, for come up there. Come up here and we will give you a nice tour of the facility we work in and all that. It'll be awesome. I really hope you make it up here. Thank you for coming on once again. And we will be right we will be right back after this. Thanks. Bye. I got news for you. I signed a multifile deal with PKFC. I will fight 135, 135. and I want to fight Crystal Pittman for my first fight. She's the number one. And I'm gonna be the number one because I'm here for the belt and nothing else. Holy! And after that fight, Chessie Chess, please sign that fucking contract so I can whoop your ass too. 
Jesse Jess, for those who don't know, that's Jessica Rose Clark out of Australia. Woo! All right, well, welcome to the show. Thank Thank you. you. Hey, welcome hey, to welcome. the show. Hey. <laughs> hey, what's up? How are you? Um, I, I see you're in a car. We had a guest earlier tonight. I hope your service a little bit better than theirs because it was better. spotty hey, at best. Yeah, I'm, I thought I'm good with my time management, but I had actually training and I just uh, jumped into the shower and I'm, yeah, I'm parking in front of the gym, but I have a good oh, connection here. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. You're definitely crystal clear right now. Now, speaking of crystal clear, you, uh, in that video little clip that we just played there, you, you wanted to fight Crystal Pittman. You called out Jesse Jess. Jessica Borga uh, ends up being your first opponent coming into the BKFC. Um, coming from your MMA background, she has an MMA background as well. Did you know Jessica Borga? And was that a name that was rattling around in your head maybe? Uh, yeah. I, um, I mean, I talked with Jules in Salt Lake City. And um, we talked about Crystal, um, Chessy Chess, but she hasn't signed yet. Um she already said if they are not down to fight, if I would be down to fight 145, because there's a girl, Jessica Borga, it's hard to find fights for her. And I said, uh, back in now with December, already, yes. So you were okay with it, but when we talked, you, you want to fight at 135, right? That's your home. You want to be, you want to make uh, your your career there in BKFC as a bare knuckle fighter, you want to be at 135, right? It's just that there yes. wasn't. I mean, I would, yeah. So I think 135, uh, there is more opportunity for me to fight, and I don't want to just fight <clears> once a year. Um, I don't have the hardest time to make 135, so I, yeah, I want to be there. But um, if I get offered a fight at 145, then I'm going to take it too. Well, we're excited to see you in there. Now, t- tell the audience, anybody who um, isn't familiar with you, wh- what what do you bring to the BKFC? Uh, tell us about your style and why it's going to translate well into the squared circle. I mean, I'm a bully. Um, I move forward no matter what. And I think my fighting style, especially my boxing background, fits perfect for BKFC. Yeah, is there anybody what, what that it, catches your eye like big time after this fight? Like, say you go through this fight, what is your actual? What's your goal? You're gonna stay for the title? You want to go all the way? So my goal is after that fight, I pray for a face down KO, and after this one, I really want to fight for a 135 title. Um, either it's against Crystal if she wins the fight in April. If not, I would be down to take the winner of Christine and Heather. What is it about Crystal? That you make sure really want to fight her. Because I know you've cut, you've said her name a couple of times. So, yeah, because she is the only 135 uh, girl right now with a little bit of experience. Um, I think I have a lot of experience. I fought on the high, highest or one of the highest level in MMA. Um, so I want competition. I do not want to fight someone where it's like, okay, everyone's like a cat gonna win easily. I want to fight someone yeah. with experience. Someone heart. Yeah. Christine Faria is always everybody's kind of like end goal in the BKFC and Christine, you know, her, like you've watched her and you know what she's been dealing with. Like she kind of took, went through everybody in her division. She has said that she doesn't mind going to 135. And when she was on our show, she said that you were interesting to her. Did you know that she said that on here? She said, yeah. and she made it, she, she said it very slow. She said, Katarina. So for, for everyone, Christina, we are cool. I think she's yeah. a, a cool girl. I really do like her. You know, we chat with each other. We talk shit to each other on Instagram. <laughs> and um, I'm down to fight her because she's a tough chick, you know, and I, I'm 100% convinced that is going to be an extremely entertaining fight. Oh yeah, yeah. She when she spoke about you, she did speak that like you you seem like a su- super tough chick, and she was like, yeah, she's real tough, and I I think I wouldn't mind fighting her. So that'd be cool too. Now you're prepping for a bare knuckle fight. I don't know. I'm sure you've had some bare knuckle scraps in your life, you know, outside of a a ring, but um, <laughs> preparation for a sanctioned uh 
ungloved fight is your preparation is it different for you are you doing things different than you normally would obviously you're not fighting mma and you're not boxing so um yeah is it, is it um, a little different for you this time yeah it's different the sparring is different um because the rules are different too i spar with big gloves um of course i do hit a lot of mitts without gloves so condition my knuckles do stuff for that um yeah so it's a lot of boxing but but changed rules are you, are you doing any um uh like any crazy conditioning on your hands like you see some of these guys punching light poles and fucking smacking e smacking their hands with baseball bats and shit like that are you doing any no. of that wild stuff or are you just sticking to uh no no push? just the just the basics like hitting back without uh <laughs> yeah, yeah without gloves hitting mitts it's like these thai people for example who kick everything to condition their shins yeah. <laughs> I, for me personally i think it's not necessary <laughs> right. um i rather go in the fight fresh you know, a lot of the debuters, even the, the most experienced like MMA fighters that have came over, Mike Perry being one, um, after their first one, when we talk to him, we like to ask him, how, how your hands? And, and Mike was talking about how in the fourth round of his fight against Julian, he started open hand slapping Julian. And he got warned by the ref because he was slapping, but mike said i didn't want to make a fist anymore because my hands hurt so bad mm -hmm. i think since then he's he's like gone into conditioning his hands he i don't know if he took it serious the first time as far as like what damage your hands are going to take punching somebody yeah. in the face 120 times you know yeah for sure it's going to be different it's uh you have to condition them a little bit um but i also do think especially females we do not have that impact that uh mike perry has on his hands right. you know right that makes sense that that makes a lot of sense um still think you still think you could get a little busted up in the in the knuckles but yeah this this sport as it continues to grow and we see more fighters like say elvin brito for instance you familiar with elvin brito no so Elvin Brito is going to be fighting on the clear water card. He, mm -hmm. He's been fighting for, for quite a while, but I, I say, I bring him up because he's got a, a very unique style and he's kind of grown with the sport with Lorenzo Hunt. He trains with Lorenzo Hunt mm -hmm. and those guys you can watch. They're, they're like students of the game and they've sort of started changing the way that they fight. And you can see other people kind of looking at their styles and pulling from them and finding, you know, intricacies in bare knuckle fighting that helps that isn't like boxing because a lot of people are like, Oh, this is boxing. It's just like boxing with no gloves. And it's like, I mean, if you, if you're watching people fight and talking to people who are fighting, there are some intricacies in it and it is a bit different. It has its own unique style, like the precision strikes instead of, you know, like you might be able to throw 120 shots, but if you hit them in the right spot, your hands won't get quite as hurt as just winging yes. punches at somebody's head as they're ducking and you're hitting them in the back of the head and the forehead and elbows and you know, wherever else. Yeah, and I mean your defense is not there either. You know, you're not you cannot do this with your hands because right, you have right. big gloves, you know. So um there's yeah, it's it's way different. This is on sport for sure. We've seen people try to use that, like you said, the boxing when they put their <laughs> hands up like this and they kind of don't I don't know if it's just muscle memory, you know, because hey, I'm in a little yeah. bit of trouble, I'm gonna throw up my arms like this. No yeah. gloves there. And people just punch right through it or go through around it, the yeah. side and then it's it's like, uh oh, hold on a second, those gloves aren't there. Something that, something that like he mentioned Elvin and, and Lorenzo, another guy is Reggie Barnett, who's uh, someone mentioned in the comments. One thing that they do different that a lot of people, they, they throw their strikes at unique angles that are kind of different. Like they kind of like, um, they'll almost pick a, a, like a hole. They'll find the hole in your defense and they'll throw that fucking pre precision strike with the knuckles right through it. It's unbelievable actually. I mean, it makes out. it makes sense. You don't want to hit their elbows or forearms all the time or even their forehead. You know, um, I think in Bernacle, you really have to pick your hard shots. Yeah. So um, what are your thoughts on Jessica Borga, uh, your opponent? Like, uh, I'm sure you have watched video on her and you've probably seen her fight MMA before. But did you take a look at her first BKFC uh, 
fight and and pick anything out of there that you liked or disliked? I mean, I uh, watched the fight. She's a tough chick. Um, I watched her MMA fights too. I think back in the days, I even watched the uh, Bellator fight against Leah. I think it was Leah. Um, I'm happy actually to fight someone with experience. You know, uh, I like to have a, like I said, competition. And we both kind of have the same experience. So I think it's going to be fun. She, she, I don't know how tall you, she's tall, right? Right. She's a big girl. I don't know. Um, are you, how, how tall are you in comparison to Jessica? I'm five, have... seven and she's, I think five, eight. Oh, so you guys are yeah. right there. Yeah. Wow. They have her listed at five, seven on topology, but you know how that goes. Yeah. Damn. She, she, she oh, might man. be an inch taller than me. I'm excited about this When Everyone always gets excited when they see a female fight on the bare knuckle card because um, Mike and I, we we started covering the sport uh you know three and a half years ago and we went to knuckle mania one and uh we had only seen it on tv and then we saw it live and we saw a fight between taylor starling and a girl named sharisa sagala i don't know mm -hmm. if you're familiar with either mm -hmm. of those two that was one of the greatest things i've ever seen <laughs> live in my yes. life and awesome. then i noticed after that that the 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 females really um bring a level of tenacity that that really <laughs> livens the crowd up I, yeah, I don't know what it is i think females also fight with more emotion <laughs> yeah they're fierce <laughs> that's fierceness true. about it yeah that is true because a lot of times the guys will hug and embrace afterwards and then you got beck and brit screaming at each other from across mm -hmm. saying fuck you to each other and then like you know <laughs> yeah. jenny yeah. savage and taylor you know hating each other yeah. it's, you're right it's funny <laughs> maybe that's what it is it puts uh, asses in seats i'll tell you that <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and um, when you're not fighting, what are you doing? Tell, tell the audience. So anybody that are that are not familiar with your background and your um, your career, a lot, we have a lot of diehard bare knuckle fans that watch this show and listen to this show, but they may not be diehard MMA fans or they might not know your background. So just tell them a little bit about yourself and uh, where you came from in your uh, your fighting background. Yeah, so I'm from Germany, obviously. Um, I started boxing when I was 14, 15, because my dad was a boxer and I just liked it and I liked to fight. I fought in school quite a bit, got kicked out of school, got sent to private schools. <laughs> so um, it was just always something I liked to do. Um, and 2012, I started with wrestling and jiu-jitsu. Um, yeah, and then I decided, hey, I just don't want to train for like nothing. I really want to compete. Had 2014, my pr first pro MMA fight, went 7-0, and and then um, got signed to Invicta FC, had my first fight in America, and decided to move or do all my training camps in America because the sport in Germany is actually pretty small. It's growing, but it's still small. And since then, I'm training here. And since two years, I actually live here in Denver, Colorado. Love Denver. I yes, lo in summer. I am not a, the biggest fan of the winter time here. <laughs> um, well, but it's it's beautiful. The only time we've been there are for events, though, and I'm pretty sure they've been in like April, October. Yeah, it was always April, May. October yeah. they had one in October so we never really got like the heart of the winter yeah. when we were there yeah. but you gotta watch out for those Denver cops though that's all I'm saying <laughs> we we'll tell you that story one day. yeah we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll tell you that story one day and it's pretty wild in private in private <laughs> yeah it's a wild one it's definitely a wild one so that's really great um so you didn't start you didn't start doing any combat sports you said until 15 you started boxing at 15 yeah i play it i actually play table tennis uh on a higher level <laughs> oh really yeah That's crazy you can get like, like 50 feet dump? away and still be hitting it onto the yeah I, I, yeah i mean i i think i'm pretty i'm still pretty good at it um i don't know why i even started with that but I, when i was young it was fun and uh i That's did it till i was 13 14 and then i was like uh, i'm done <laughs> wow <laughs> Do you have videos of this on your social media or anything? No, <laughs> no. I, I mean, I, I could ask my mom uh, if she has maybe something 
on videotape or so yeah but no we'll have to get a game going if we run into you we have to make a little video yeah get a game. Do i don't think i'm any good but I, i'll still play <laughs> <laughs> I love I love like when a fighter tells us some obscure fact about themselves yeah. like that. Like I don't remember who we were talking to, Mike, and they were we were it was a dude, it was like a heavyweight fighter. And he was like, We're like, well, what do you do when you're not fighting and when you're you know, he crocheted. He was like a crochet. Oh, was that? it uh um, was it the crochet uh, crochet buff? It wasn't no, it wasn't him, but it was like I don't know. It might it was somebody it was somebody I know there's a guy who actually has, is like the crochet something, right? But it wasn't him. But that blew my mind. I was just like, you know what? I wouldn't. Yeah, last thing you it. thought the heavy heavyweight male fighter <laughs> yeah, was going to say crochets. I mean, my wife crochets downstairs on the couch <laughs> right now. I just you two would hit it right off. That's crazy. Uh, and you got the table tennis. I love that. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, was it was it Adams? He um, was it Juan Adams, Mike? Juan Adams, oh, Mike. Juan, yeah, I think maybe. I think Juan Adams said he crochets as well. Maybe he picked it up from the other heavyweight that was in the tough house with him, maybe. But anyways, uh, we're looking forward to you fighting for sure. The, the, the women's divisions always are looking for new blood because it's been like the same eight or ten girls for about five yeah. years now. So welcome to the BKFC. We're excited to Thank see you, you fight. Um for everyone that's going to be paying attention, it's April 12th. She's going to be on that Clearwater, Florida card against Jessica Borga, the Black Widow. Borga's 1-0, so this will only be her second fight. Uh, you're making your debut. Watch out for this one, everybody. Um, Katerina, do you have anything that you'd like to say to the audience or anybody before we uh, wrap up with you tonight? No, just watch the fight, enjoy it, and yeah, have a good time. That's awesome. all I'm planning to do. <laughs> I love it. Mike and I usually try to make as many events as we can to uh, cover them live, but uh, we can't make this one. But we mm -hmm. will be hosting a watch party at Mohegan Sun in the Mohegan Sun uh, Casino up here in Connecticut. Oh, nice. So we'll have a shitload of people in the bar watching you guys fight, too. Nice. So we'll hype them up for your fight. They'll, they'll get all Please. excited and act stupid <laughs> for your fight. Yeah. <laughs> and please That's get drunk for me. It's yeah, actually yeah. my it's actually my birthday week. So uh oh really when's no your way. birthday? Uh April 9th. April 9th. April 9th. It's coming well, up soon, very soon. Six oh so look, oh so yeah, it's right before right after your birthday. Yeah. You're gonna be yeah. punch someone in the damn face. Exactly. It's a good birthday give present. A, give yourself yes. a little birthday present of like fight of the night, maybe. Yeah. There you go. That would, awesome. that would be actually a good one. <laughs> yeah. Travis yeah. Thompson was just on the show. His birthday was April first. So, nice. couple of there birthdays fighting on the birthdays. same card. Well, enjoy yourself. Thank you for coming on here, Thank Mike. You. Do you, Do you have anything else for Katarina before we let her go? Hey, I, I've been waiting for this because when we ran into you in Salt Lake City, we were like, man. You came up and you're like, hey, I want to fight. I'm signed. I'm gonna fight. We're like, wait, what? <laughs> Where the hell did this? I feel like it just came out of nowhere. We just walked yeah. out and all of a sudden Jules is like, oh, this is Katharina. She's going to, she's signed. She's going to be fighting. We're like, what the hell? And I feel like, and I can just imagine what it feels like to you in eternity since that happened. I yeah, swear to God, sure. it feels like it's been forever. And it's been where, long. where it's was been, that? Denver? It, it was in Salt, Salt, Lake City. Salt Lake City. Oh, that was Salt Lake City. Okay. Yeah. It was Salt Lake City. And um, yeah, that was. God, that was five months ago now, right? That was yeah. So yeah, it was December. I was supposed to fight February, um, but the person said no. Then I was supposed to fight April 29th. Sarah Alpop dropped out, and yeah, now it's April 12th. <laughs> well, wow. I cannot wait. Everybody in the comments can't wait. Kyle can't wait. You can't wait, no. man. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Clearwater Beach. It's going to be beautiful. I'm sure of that. And. Uh, Wish we could be there. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And uh, we will catch up with you later. And for everybody else, stick around. We will be right back after this. Have See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. feel to know that one of your fighters can kick your ass. None of my fighters can kick my ass. Uh, yeah, because I'm not your fighter. They say four Listen, fighter. don't make me kick they your ass. What? If, you I'm, if I kick your ass, all I got to do is do this. That's how short you are. <laughs> Oh man. Well, okay. Get I've been fucking ass. you up all day long. I put on the show.
<laughs> nice little clip there. I love that. Elman man. and Thompson going at each other. They always do that when they're together, by the way, because as we talk, as we spoke about earlier, Travis and the Feldman family have known each other for, for quite a while. So yeah, that, that was funny. That was a, that was a good night. That was a really fun night. What do you, so, uh, Katarina's pretty laid back, huh? She's pretty laid back. You know, she, she's, um, she didn't have a ton to say, but. She could be ultra focused right now because they are only what fucking uh, nine days out from the fight. So they are in the heart of their training camp or in the, at the end of their training camp. But yes, it's exciting to see another new established combat sports fighter, um, you know, Stepping into the squared circle because for the longest time, you know, Jules is doing a good job bringing girls in, but it, it, it's tough. It's tough to find women with actual combat sports experience that want to come over here and do this. You know what I mean? A lot of them are are debuters or or whatever, but yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just the fact that it's bare knuckle and it's just women don't want to do it for some reason. It just seems like there there is a very slow trickle of females dripping into the sport of bare knuckle. It's like they're not the guys. I feel like everywhere we go, there's guys like I can't wait. Oh fucking my whole life I've been waiting for this. You know, people get they they're just crazy. They want to fight bare knuckle. I haven't quite seen the same type of an attitude from many females. Well, you know what I mean? I mean, if you it's look, happened. if you just look at the tryouts, I don't know what the actual um, stats are for women to men, but I, I bet you it's one woman fighter to every 25 yeah, that's men what I would say too. that are trying out. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. at, at in Connecticut, there was, it was only a small turnout. They, mm -hmm. they didn't do the best job promoting that one i'm i will say that again um yep. there was maybe 20 fighters there and it was one one female yeah and actually she was really good too yeah like, grace I, her good, name is grace as, long and i, I hope that i hope we see her man she she was uh she's only 19 years old too that's what Gr grace um who tried out in connecticut is a jits girl but she's also been boxing and she's doing some MMA. Uh, she's putting it all together and taking MMA fights. But she's she's fighting in um, reality fights. She took a jujitsu fight at reality fights as well. So she's a very active young female fighter. And she sh she showed up like she messaged me because she was a friend of somebody in the army with us. And uh, she says, you know, so and so told me that there's going to be bare knuckle tryouts soon. And I gave yeah. her the information thinking like, maybe like, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, I said, yeah, they'll be on this day and blah, 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 blah. Mike and I show up there and she's the only girl there. Yeah. So fucking more yeah. power to her. That was super cool of her to show up and to try out. So yeah, it's, um, it's a tough task to, to pull a female into, um, this gritty sport, but they, they should just watch the sport for a minute because, if they think they're going to get super injured or they're going to mess their faces up or whatever. I, and not that that's what the idea is. I don't know if that's, but like maybe they're just afraid of injuries. I don't look know. At, look I, at all I, the girls I, that are in there. There's no. really, there really has not the, the most, the grossest uh, injuries that you've seen so far are broken teeth. Um, with Melanie Shaw and Paige Van Zandt breaking um, Britain's teeth. Right. Yep. She got her whole bottom rack pushed in um, broken teeth. And then like Sharice Zagala broke her leg or bro broke her foot. Yeah. But that was a no, freak injury. But that type of shit happens in MMA. Yeah. She, ste time, she so stepped I don't back. know if that's it. Yeah. She stepped back and it. snapped, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm really right. not positive what it is, but it is kind of odd. There just seems like to be a very slow trickle. I just, yeah. But you know what? Hey, listen, we've got is, her. We've got Laner. We've got Hardy. Mike, did, did we, do we have, um, if we don't, we'll just talk about it tomorrow, but there was a bunch of fights, um, announced, uh, yep. today for knuckle mania four. There's yes. there, so knuckle mania four, you got Lorenzo and, and Terrell, you got, 
you got Ben Rothwell and Duffy. You got Mike Perry and Tiago Alves, but they've been announcing other ones, and I don't know if everybody has seen them. There's that one. Uh, how do you say his last name? Kurdinoff? Kurdinoff. Kurdinoff, Kurdinoff uh, versus Lane. That's a... Uh, that's that's gonna be a banger right there, man. Um, there's that one. I was one. just thinking about this dude saying, Where the hell is Kurdinov? How come we have not seen him? We heard about him, didn't see him for a really long time. He fought Gogo. Yeah, and he Gogo lost spoiled it. Denver. Yeah. Never saw him again since then. Just disappeared. Him and Gogo went to the bell though, and um, right? Yeah. Gogo didn't yeah. finish him. That was that, that was, was Gogo's first uh fight that he went the distance. Gogo took that fight on like seven days' notice or something. I know, crazy, what right? a beast. And it was and he went up to 175 for it. Um, yeah, but Kurdinov is a is an animal. You know what? Him and his team were like the coolest guys backstage. Yeah, Remember yes, that? they were awesome. Mm-hmm. They were so they were like very respectful and grateful to be there and happy to meet everybody. And they were so they were really nice. And then Justin Gaethje came back there, and I, I got to do an interview with Gaethje. And those guys stood off to the side and waited yeah. like patiently. And they were like so ecstatic to meet Justin Gaethje. And I just thought that was so cool because like this is a professional fighter, but they're, I don't know where they come from. I don't know what is, where, he, what uh, country. Oh, his actual from. country that he's yeah, from? Yeah. I don't know if he's like, you know, Dagestan or one of the stands out there. I'm sure yeah, he's he is, definitely but... from that area. He's definitely, he's definitely... From that area. I'm sure. Uh, here we go. Look at he's got. <clears throat> he's from Russia. It doesn't he's... say. Oh wait, he, it's... he was born in uh, in Ukraine. Okay, Ukraine. Oh, nice. Yeah, Crimea and Ukraine. Yeah, my grandfather was Ukrainian, but we always said Russian. But he was yeah. from re- Ukraine. Um, no, super cool guy. Uh, Drew Angel Corps against Ruben War. And Ruben War is the guy who just got a first round finish the other day against Lorenzo Coca. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and um, he put on a show at the weigh ins with Lorenzo Coca. He was the one that got into, you know, got into a little shoving match with him. Um, put on a little show there, goes in there, gets a first round finish. We talked to him after the fight. He tells us his story about being shot at nine times in a car with his girl in the car. Um, the bullets all missed him. Something, he, he says, you know, I must have had someone watching over me that day because not, none of the, not one of the nine bullets that went into my car hit me. Um, he was 200 pounds and depressed and cut 50, or 45 pounds to make 155 and fight Lorenzo Coca. Yeah. Um, fought in front of his mom. That was yep, like for the first the guy time had, ever in his life. First time ever in his life. He met his mom when he was 28. He's 35 right now. That kid looks like he's 22, mm-hmm. but he's 35 years old. Roofer, single father, a bunch of kids or a couple of three, four, two or three kids. Um, single father met his mom at 28 years old. And now at 37, she gets to see him fight for the first time. And he has 24 pro MMA fights under his belt, probably a bunch of yep. Emmys as well. So he's yep. fought a bunch. Uh, Drew Angel Corps, who is three zero and one is fighting him. A lot of people wanted to see the ODB fight against Angel Corps, and I get it. Mm-hmm. And I did too. And you did too. But mm-hmm. when, when, when you, when Drew Angel Corps and, and ODB been going at it for this long on the internet and it hasn't been made yet, it's not going to get made. You just got to come to that conclusion I don't know what it was about that matchup that the BKFC didn't like, but they didn't go that route. I think ODB is going to have a fight sometime soon in one of the Southern States. I think that'll happen soon because he's ready to go and he is a name in the top five. So they're going to give him something. Meanwhile, they give Angel Core this kid war. He's coming out on, you know, a four week turnaround, right? It'll be a four week turnaround. He goes out there, he beats Coca, and after the fight was over, he said he wanted on Knuckle Mania. We yep. asked Dave Feldman at the press conference if any of the California guys that were on this card tonight, the two California guys on this card tonight took no damage and finished their opponent in the first round. Is there a possibility that we get to see one or two of them on the Knuckle Mania? He said, we're going to see if we can make that happen. 
and now Ruben Moore gets Drew Angel Core. I love yep. it. Yep. Yeah, he's on I mean, it. He 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 was happy. He was happy about that. Both of them were. The other person is Nick Coring, who had that insane knockout against Cal Cal McElroy. And it seemed as though they only maybe had one spot for one fighter to get on it. So the likelihood of seeing Coring, I don't think, is that great. But I really hope it, they do put him on there because I want to see that guy fight again, and I want to see him fight again ASAP. Uh, not you got to talk about you got to talk about his star pile. Like Mike, so, Mike, Mike has a great video, but this dude sold. I'll share the video six, tomorrow. He'll share the video, dude. He he sold six tables full mm -hmm. of. There were six tables there for him. Yeah. And right. Tell, tell and I don't know how bit. many more seats he sold on top of those tables. Because the tables, if people have seen videos, the ring, right? You have the ring. Then you have the VIPs inside of the barricade. So maybe some famous people, maybe some uh, people, you know, uh, investors and, and, and then like real special guests and stuff like that inside the barricade. Outside the barricade on one side, you have about three or four rows of VIPs, right? Single chairs just right next to each other, four rows, right? Around the rest of the ring, mostly at every event, are tables with bottle service, right? So you have your own freaking cocktail waitress that comes around, and there are either eight or ten seats at each table. Yeah. And they could be, uh, you know, $100, $150 a seat per table, right? He sold all those tables and then probably a bunch of seats. And, and you know, he's from California, so... <laughs> If that, I think it's you know, dumb. I think to say those tables are about two grand a table. Yeah, they safe. could be two hundred a seat. Right. I, I just don't about, know at different events. Yeah. They're because sure I I, I know that I was told at some of the events that they were about two thousand a table. But anyways, that's what. But I like, mean, Knuckle Mania opposed to BK yeah, fifty nine or so. You know what I mean? That the seats are probably slightly different in price, but still they're up there, right? They're up there. So so basically, this guy's there. Um, uh, after his fight, we want to get an interview. So I'm say we're at the, uh, uh, nine o'clock position on a, <laughs> on a clock and Kyle is almost at, he's at like five 30, but, but we can't get to him going counterclockwise. We have to go clockwise. Right. So I'm like, Hey, you want to do this interview? He's like, yeah, yeah, let's go. So we start walking and people want to take a picture with them. So we stop. There's people taking a picture and then they're taking picture after picture. And then more people are getting up and they want pictures too. So they're taking pictures and we're all in one spot. So I have my camera and I'm taking pictures. Right. Good. We're right by where there's uh, some, some, uh, a little bear stand. Right. So he's like, he's like asking them like if they're still a selling bear and they're like, no, nah, we don't have any, we don't have any bear left or anything like that and then he's basically like ah fuck i i don't have anything on me i literally just walked out of the bat like he just got dressed and came out after his fight right so he has nothing with him and i was like dude i, I get you bear i don't give a shit but the lady was like oh no we don't you know we're closed now and he's like what i was like hey you see this guy he just knocked out this other fighter like you know like 15 minutes ago in the ring he just wanted to leave. let the guy have a freaking drink what the fuck so like the guy what was like the bartender he was like looking at me and i was like come on and then he's like okay fine so it was like just get two so he got two i think guinness right so just get, fucking take two beers yeah, there were dos equis, you know two oh dos equis, yeah, yeah so dos it's like equis. enjoy yourself take two beers so <clears throat> as he's waiting for the bear Another four people come up and they're taking pictures and the people at the table are taking pictures. So I'm like, all right, let's, let's go. I start walking. I don't get like five steps and someone else, he gets stopped and stopped and stopped. I'm talking like every single five set, every, every few steps, he gets stopped, getting stopped, getting stopped. Then we get to a point where there's people in the crowd and the, the wall is high up, right? What is it like a, maybe like a, a nine foot, yeah, eight or nine foot. foot yeah. yeah. And there's people sitting in the front row and they're, they're like, like hanging, hanging down. Yeah. And they're like, we want to take a picture. So like, he's going up against a wall like this and they're handing me the camera and now I'm taking pictures. And then the people next to them and the people that we have to take a picture with like every single person in the goddamn row before I can get to Kyle to do the damn interview. We stopped. Like I'm talking like, I don't know, a hundred times. Like we stopped every person to stop this guy to yeah. take a damn picture. I could not get over to Kyle. I was like, Kyle, we're on our way over. Normally it would take one minute to get to him. It took me like 25 minutes to get to him. Right. Everybody he's wanted definitely, to get to this guy. He's, he's a, he, so for those of you who don't know, it was Nick, wild. Nick Coring, they call him Kill Shot Coring. He is from Stockton, California and trains at Nick Diaz, at the Nick Diaz Academy 
um, and he's part of the, the Nick Diaz army. You know what I mean? He trains with Nick and Nate and all those guys, you know, the fucking scrap packers, those guys. Um, he has, man, he's got tons of charisma. He clearly can fight. He's built like a fucking tank. He looks like a Viking. Um, our interview with him was awesome. He's got a lot of energy and a lot of charisma in the, on the mic. Yeah. And um, and he was like, if you guys haven't seen it, go to our YouTube channel and watch the interview with me and Nick Coring. And uh, and he will talk about. He's like the whole eighty five division. He's like, I don't think they're ready for me. He's like, I'll fight. I'll fight all of them. He's like, uh, he basically said that he has no doubt that he's going to be the 185 pound champion. He might go to one, one to two. He might go to two Oh five. And he said, mm -hmm. he might go heavyweight. He goes, I walk around two twenty. I'm ready to fight everyone. He goes, I, I've been bare knuckle fighting my whole life. It got me sent, sent to prison. <laughs> yeah. I got sent to prison, bare knuckle fighting. I got yeah. sent to prison. Bare yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a Viking of a dude. Yeah. Um, I mean, before we wrap up for the for the night, why don't we just hit a few things that happened that night? Um, oh, we had one more fight uh, to talk about. Oh, uh, on it, this card, we we're going through the card. Oh, yep, Danny Alvarez and uh, who's Rosas? I don't know. I'm not sure uh, who Rosas is, but we do know who Alvarez is. And then you got you also That's have his uh, best turnaround ever. Right, right. Cause didn't he get injured the last fight? What was he? Didn't didn't he get injured? I, wasn't that why he? Like the last Stopped fight in, my, in Miami, right? Yeah. Uh, well, maybe. I thought, he, I thought he got like he got injured, and that's why he was. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. But we also have David Diaz is fighting that kid, Sean Sean Jordan. Is that his name? Yes, yeah, Sean Jordan, who is an influencer. I'm not even sure. Honestly, he's an he's an influencer. I see him with Bryce Hall. Yeah. He's, he's like a, in the Bryce Hall group. But is he a boxer or is he I have an no idea. I'm not sure. And um, it's a weird, it's a weird matchup. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, that knuckle mania card. So, so Russ is asking about giveaways. We can give away a, um, a Travis Thompson, Travis Thompson picture, right? Don't we have an autographed Travis Thompson picture? We do. We have an autographed Travis Thompson picture. Uh, I do have one. Do you have a question to give? Um, I can. No. I, I, <laughs> no. Well, I I have the um, the rounds one. Oh, I said does someone it, remember that? Does someone remember? I'm like, listen. The first person that says how many rounds Travis Thompson fought in the BKFC can have the picture of him signed. Signed picture of Travis Thompson for the first person person that says how many total rounds he has been in the BKFC squared circle. Hurry up, put it in the comments, and you'll have that picture right there. Signed by the animal himself, Travis Thompson. All you got to do is remember what I said earlier in this show and throw the number up. No, 22 is wrong. Keep it going. But anyways, while they're trying to guess this, um, the I want to point out two fights that went down at uh BKFC 59 in Albuquerque, and that was um Justin Street versus Tony Sanchez, uh L Lil Nidus Sanchez. That fight was fantastic, and they gave you guys are getting closer, but you're still not still not right. Um they gave the fight of the night to the main event, John Dodson and uh, in Dagoberto Aguero. But I thought personally, Mike Quig won. There it is. Boom. 39 rounds, mofos. 39 rounds. That's a lot of rounds. That's a lot of five minute rounds. That's a long time. I don't know how. Uh, if what what math that brings it out to, but that's that's over an hour. I know that, right? <laughs> Thirty nine times five is well over an hour. I think um, it's two. It's almost two, two hours, right? Two minute rounds. Oh, two minutes. Oh, I'm thinking five. What am I fucking thinking? But yeah. 39, 39 times two. He's over, an, over hour, an hour. Hour and eighteen. Yeah, it's over an hour. Hour and eighteen. Wow. Um. So what I was saying is, it's not three. No. That so would that would be if it was, an MMA. If, if it was if it was MMA, but I'm wrong. Um, Justin Street and and Sanchez, 
The reason why I would have gone fight of the night to those two was the incredible um, rate that they were striking each other. Yeah. And, and Tony Sanchez was getting absolutely fucking cracked by Justin street busted up. Like he was leaking from a lot of spots and he was not going down. And um, there was no knockdowns in that fight. There was no knockdowns. There was twice as many strikes in the street Sanchez fight with no knockdown. So five rounds of straight fucking war, bloody war on their feet for 10 minutes. And then, um, then, so I thought that was the fight of the night, but there was a lot of drama in the main event in the, the knockdowns. There was knockdown for John Dotson in the first, then knockdown for Dagoberto in the second and the third. Then Dotson should have had a knockdown in the fourth. They called it a slip. Do- open scoring in Albuquerque has them two to, uh, has Dotson needing to win the fifth round yep. to go to, you know, to br- bring it to a sixth, which we thought was going to happen. John goes out there and just puts pressure on Dagoberto the whole time. And if Aguero might have been a, just a little bit more aggressive in that fifth round, he might be the new champion. Yeah, yeah, I was. But he he ba- he that. barely threw any strikes in the fifth round with an open scoring. Yep, he knows exactly where he's at in that fight, and to fight like that now, I'll be like, sure, maybe he's just tired and he couldn't. I don't know. Maybe he's hurt. I don't know. But it was tied by the way it was scored. It had to be tied. There's no way that. Dodds, I mean, Joe, Joe Ivy says he she it, had Dodson winning, but it, so, there's no way that it could have been that. Right. He was down. He was down on the scorecard because he had a 10 8 in the first. Then right. Dagoberto had second and third 10 8s. 10 8s, right. And then John would have had a 10 8 in the fourth if they called it a knockdown, but they called yes. it a slip. And so, they would have been straight up tied going into the fifth, and whoever won the fifth would have been the winner. But because they called it a slip in the fourth, John was he down a, a point. Yeah, yeah. John got a 10-9, so he was down a True. point on the cards. So he he needed to knock him down. And if if John would have knocked Aguero down in the in the fifth with the open scoring and everything, he would have won the fight. Right, but, right, right. But he didn't. And we all got the sixth round robbed from us from the that was athletic a huge commission. letdown, I'll tell you what, because I that's a way to <laughs> everyone was like excited about that fight it was unbelievable it that's the type of thing that unfortunately for Dotson but that's what people love to see the underdog comes in there and does something that not many people believed he could do you know and goes in and just Dod John Dotson before that was what never knocked down never knocked out right he, he had never been knocked down in an MMA fight yeah and he got knocked down twice in that one fight that's crazy. And people were going wild. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we're going to a six round. Like this is a real, like remember the Travis Thompson, Ryan Reaper thing was like crazy because no one even realized like it was going to go to a six round. Like that was so surprising. This one was like, yes, everyone kind of, everyone who knows the sport knew it was going to a six round, like pretty much. Right. Like, we know it's going, yeah. it's open, it's open scoring. We see it here. We know they're going to go to it. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, it's a freaking tie. What? Felt it's robbed. Tie? We have I to leave robbed. here like that. Talk about blue balls. Holy yeah. shit! That I was felt, insane. I felt we like we got robbed. Yeah, like we got absolutely hosed at the end of that, and it was such a great, such a great night. Yeah, um, yeah. Daddy Dow Berto Schrock. Was, oh, go ahead. He's he's legit, dude. And he fought, and we, me and you talked about it. We talked about it with some people on the way in, and I'm like, the way he was fighting off his back foot against Chancey Wilson and countering the attacks and like circling out and piecing him up with the combos. He, yes, Chancey Wilson is not John Dotson. I'm like, but he looked pretty fucking good in that fight. And Dotson and him are very similar in stature and approach. Now, like I said, and, and maybe Chancey will laugh at this. We called him like the Timu, uh, the Timu fucking version of, of John Dotson. Like he, like, you know, he's exciting. He is. And he, and he's good. It all the stuff you buy off that app is still pretty decent, I guess, but it's like, (laughs) 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 but he's not John Dotson. 
that, but that's the whole point. He's not John Dotson. Dotson is a guy who took De, uh, Demetrius Johnson to the bell twice. And Demetrius, in a lot of people's eyes, is the best of all time. You know what I mean? He's right there, top three. So Yeah, yeah, for MMA. Yeah. But maybe not. Yeah. BK, and I love you, Chancey. I was just fucking good. around. Um, yeah. Well, Chancey's I, on a different line. I mean, John Dodson, like you said, in MMA is very well known, very good fighter, fought all the best people, totally different. He's he's totally different. He's totally different. He's a totally different guy. Super powerful. Yeah. But what I was getting at there is that Aguero fought the same exact way. He, he fought the same way, the same way he fought Chancey. He, he fought the same way against John. He was comfortable backing up and letting john come in on him he was comfortable countering landing combinations uh, on the counter circling he was he was really impressive i thought he was very impressive and he was um, um we have a question here from daryl schrock what is y'all's thoughts on open scoring kyle what do you think do you like well, it do you not I, like I, it I am sort of on the fence with this. I I do like the man, I I mean I I like some suspense. You know what I mean? I like watching a tight a tight fight and like wondering, "Oh my god, who do these judges have up?" But I also like for this last fight, for example, I loved the open scoring because I knew how John Dotson was going to come out of his corner for that fifth round. Yeah. And, and everybody else knew it because John had to have been told by his corner, you are down on the cards right now. You're going to lose this fight unless you if go you out here and knock him yeah, the fuck out or round. put him on his ass. You need to put him on his ass this round. Um, to win. Uh, so I guess I like I guess I like it more than I dislike it. I like it. I, I guess. How about you, Mike? Um, as a fan, I I like it. I like it on the screen, so I know what's going on for the fight. But for the fighters, I don't know if I like it too much because I can see fighters coasting. Yeah, because absolutely. they already know where they're at, so they coast. Right. If they're unsure, then hmm, maybe you might have to fight a little more. But that also throws them into a dangerous territory where, hey, they could be winning the fight. They just don't know they are. And then they go in and do something stupid and get knocked out of the fight. That happens, too. But I just, you know, it's got its ups and downs. I, I do like I like the open scoring. I like seeing what it is. Um, you know, it, but maybe nice, but it could hurt right. the fighters in a way. If open scoring, I think, would be. I don't think fighters would coast so much. If there was only three three rounds, I'm not saying that like I want them to, like, but like in MMA, open scoring would be nice because two rounds out of three, you can't coast that third round, right? Like you can try, but that 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 guy over there is going to try to fucking kill you. But yeah, in five, but, I mean, but, in, but, in, but in, like in a five round fight, though, if you're up four rounds to zero, and that other guy is is like i'm fucked i'm not gonna win i don't know maybe you're you're in for like the most boring fifth round ever because the dude's like I'm, i can't knock him out and i'm already down four rounds to zero so what the fuck am i gonna do well i'm just gonna go yeah off. yeah I, it could be good or bad but at the same time i think it's probably more good than bad because the fighters know what they need to do so you're gonna go out there like you know the other guy you know what the score is so the opposite side of the of the ring knows what they have to do so you know that they know so even if you think you're going to be able to, hey, I'm up three rounds and there's two left and I'm doing pretty well. So I don't even really have to win the next two rounds. I just can just lose both of them and still win the fight. The other person knows too. So they know they have to fucking come after you with everything they got or they're going to lose. Yeah. So they're going to fucking come after your ass. So I don't know. It could be good and bad. Yeah. There, there's there's definitely. I think overall there... I like it. Right. I, I, I mean, Daryl, I don't know if we answered your, there's I think thumbs up. there's, thumbs up there's, there's, the there's definitely, there's I'll definitely pros and cons. There's definitely some fucking good and some bad to it. Um, I think I'm leaning more towards the good. I, I think I, I like it more than I dislike it. 
Yeah. So. Uh, another thing that we didn't talk about uh, that we can bring up here and maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow a little more is instant replay. Absolutely. We got to talk instant about instant replay. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. We, we got to, we got to start getting some better rules here for the fighters, for the refs and everybody involved. Let's, Let's, you know, let's do common, common sense rules, I feel like. If if something happens and we're unsure, it takes seconds to check things. But for right. some reason in this, I don't know what it is in this world. This people don't like change. The politics of getting things changed, it's ridiculous. It's silly. It's in every aspect of our life, whether it's work or politics or anything else, where it's like instant replay would be great. Was the fighter's knee down? Yes or no? Right. I yes. don't know. It happened in a split second, and I'm a referee who's a human, and I can only see as much um, as I can see at a certain time when people. You remember are the Melvin Gillard, out. the Melvin Gillard yes. fight? Remember that? Right. Like he. How hit can the you dude. make that decision? You take one second and you look at a damn replay, and then you're good again. You're like, no, your knee wasn't down, or yes, it was down, and then you just keep going. Right. Like what? What the frig? You know? Yeah, I, I, I think Seems instant silly. replay. I think instant replay would help. Um, and, and I've said this before on the show and I think that we agree, like when the UFC started in 1993, right. And they had two rules, no biting and no eye gouging, right. That was like the only fucking rules. You could kick someone in the nuts. You could fucking pull their hair. You can do all that shit. You know, a couple years goes by, they add some rules, they fix some things. Five years down the road, they get a whole new, they get a full fucking rule set every year all the way up until like 2000 and fucking three they they were tweaking the rules we're only five years into this sport right now and um these are things that they can absolutely implement they could fucking take a yep. they can have a meeting of the minds with all the biggest players in the game and the and the highest ranked officials like dan margliata and they can get andy glenn in there and fucking um what was the dude that was there the nick 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 Barron's is it Barron's? Ba yeah, Nick Barron's. Nick Barron's, get him like get those three guys that do the most BKFC events. Have them sit down, get the get Feldman and those guys and all, and then sit down and like let those guys say, "Hey, um, I think you guys should implement replay for us." Because it's a, such a new sport and it's so fast paced and so much crazy shit is going on and and we could absolutely fuck up some calls and we could absolutely be right about these calls. But in an instant, it wouldn't be too bad. These these fights go so fast anyway. These events are fucking twice as fast as an MMA event. You're not in there for five hours at a time. Give us the 30 seconds it takes to go look at a fucking camera. Yeah. You know, or, and 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 square it away and get it right, right there on the spot, on the spot correction. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's such an easy thing. Such an easy thing. They can count we'll on somebody outside more. the ring to do the count until the ref takes over. They can't count on somebody to just look at the instant replay and go, no, 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 his knee, his knee wasn't down. They can't do that. Yeah. Like one second. Exactly. It would exactly. literally take one freaking second. There's people watching the damn TVs. It's crazy. But anyways, right. But that would be that would be a cool thing to continue to talk about and talk and, and it would be nice to get like Mergliata and Andy and Nick on here or mm -hmm. one of them or two of them on here yeah. and like just discuss it with them. Like, what would you guys do to change anything to make it better? You know what I mean? What's like, good, what's bad? What what's the difficulties? Uh, you know. What rules aren't here? Well, maybe there's there maybe there's rules they they think should be implemented that yeah. aren't even in the rule book. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and what rules should lot. be taken out? Yeah, absolutely, man. I, I think I think so. At June in June of this year, they hit the six year mark, right? They'll hit their six year anniversary. Um it's it's like the perfect time. It's the perfect time to uh, have that conversation and just keep making it better. It's already becoming one of the best sports in the world anyway. Why not just keep tweaking it and making it better? Don't yep. fucking make it worse. Make it better. Anyways, Idris Swasi, we had a really bad connection with you tonight, yeah. but thank yeah. you for coming on and trying with us. Maybe we can uh, catch back up with you another time, but good luck with you in your fight against Jay Jackson, who will be on the show tomorrow night, right? Yes. Um, Thank you to Travis Thompson, who is uh, making his 11th trip to the BKFC squared circle against Abby Velasquez. Um, he, you know, he's an animal and we love talking to him. So thank you for coming on the show. Best of luck against Abby. 
We got Eric Lozano, the other half of the main event tomorrow night coming on. Um, he's going to be fighting Mike, Mike Richmond, but you know, we'll talk to him and, our last guest of the evening tonight was Katarina Liner. Thank you so much for coming on. We will have her opponent, Jessica Borga, tomorrow night. So the the lineup tomorrow, Jay Jackson, Eric Lozano, Jessica Borga. Make sure you're tuned in with us. Mike, do we have anything else for the peoples? You know, right now that is it. Tomorrow we will catch back up and we'll go over a bunch of stuff. And then after our guests, we do will do outside. some outside the circle. If anybody has anything to add to outside the circle that you want us to talk about, send us an email at missionaccomplished at gmail.com, or you can just direct message either one of us on either one of our personal pages or Instagram or anywhere like that. So it doesn't matter what it's about. It does not have to be about BKFC. It can be about anything. You know, we talked about Roadhouse last week, and we're probably going to talk about it tomorrow because we watched it over the weekend. So since the last time you saw us, we've watched it, both of us. So we'll talk about that too. Why not? But uh, yeah, send us something if you want us to talk about it. If not, we'll have a, a number of things lined up after our three guests. All right. I think that's Absolutely. it. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Peace.